Shamai! In this video, to celebrate 125 years of Gardner School, we are going to talk about the past head teachers and interview Morrison Frew, the Chair of Governors, a past teacher at Gardner School, and Lynn Guy, the Charter Yaith Governor and a past pupil at Gardner Girls Grammar School. Gardner County Intermediate School at Tarabo Street was opened on Saturday 5th, March 8, 1898. From October 5th, 1896, the school had used the vestry at Bethel Chapel, Garreton. The first headmaster was Mr. William Edwards. In 1899, D.E. Williams became the new headmaster of Garreton County School. He was headmaster for 38 years. Pupil population changes were dramatic in the early part of the century and it was agreed to create a new girls' grammar school. In 1937, Mr. D.E. Williams conducted his last assembly in the Talbot Street School before the school separated into a boys' and girls' grammar school. In 1937, Miss Hilda Bassett was appointed the first headmistress of the girls' grammar school at South Southwark Gowdon. Miss Bassett was respected by all the girls, but kept strict rules. There was, were shoes that were to, only to be worn indoors. Only staff were allowed to do the main fire up the main stairs. In 1966, Miss Hilda Bassett retired and was replaced with Miss Star and the Talks. In 1972, Mr. Owen Lewis was the last head teacher of the girls' grammar school, and he went. Then he went on to be the head teacher of the newly formed Panorail Comprehensive in 1973. In 1937, Dr. T. J. James took over from Mr. D. E. Williams as headmaster of the Boys' Grammar School, located at Tarbo Street School. Garrison Boys' Grammar School had matured, and Dr. James would be one of the schools in Wales that could offer an academic education equivalent to some of the mighty English public schools. He had overseen the output of many outstanding boys and the school became one of the finest rugby academies that have ever existed. But he also encouraged music, musical participation to a high level of performance. Behind closed doors, he was apparently strict with the teachers, demanding the higher standards and discipline Dr. James retired in July 1967 after 30 years of service. Mr. John Morse, a graduate from the University of Wales, became a caretaker headmaster of Galton Boys Grammar School, recommended the less academic boys to good firm to pursue commercial based work. He also helped find in summer jobs for many boys. Mr. A. B. Daniel took over as the headmaster of Gowton Boys Grammar School in September 1969. He had a formidable reputation as a rugby player and a no-nonsense approach to running the school. But with an enhanced academic reputation, particularly for university and Cambridge entrance. In 1972 to 1973, the Boys and Girls Grammar School merged to form Gowton Comprehensive School. Mr. A. B. Daniel was appointed the headmaster of Gowton Comprehensive School. Mr. A. B. Daniel retired in 1990 and was replaced by Mr. Paul Green. Mr. Paul Green was head teacher for 16 years before he retired in December 2006 and was replaced by Mr. Peter Harrison. In 2016, Mr. Peter Harrison retired and was replaced by the current headmaster, Mr. Nigel Jones. Mr. Nigel Jones started his teaching career at Proctor Gillis Comprehensive School as a PE and history teacher. He went on to become a head teacher at Pencha Hafford Comprehensive, Comprehensive School. Mr. Nigel Jones' philosophy has always been that people come first, last and always. During his time at Gowton School, Mr. Nigel Jones has extended the high academic, personal and cultural standards. He has also worked closely with the community and led 
Gary can score to success academically, culturally, in sport and other extracurricular activities. He has inspired lots of pupils and staff with a be the best you can be attitude. During the last three ed teachers, the school has continued to achieve our high standard academically and in extracurricular activities. It continues to produce sportsmen and women that represent Wales. Music continues to thrive and continues with the tradition of wrangling concerts and Anglo Command Vagani Christmas Carol service and the service of remembrance. Miss Kathleen Nolan will replace Mr. Nigel Jones and become the first head mistress of Garrison School. Longer Rahiada in Bath. Miss Kathleen Nolan has been a teacher at Garrison School for over 30 years and, was, and has made a significant impact on the life of the school and the pupils. Miss Kathleen Nolan has moved from being director of music to assistant head teacher de to deputy head. We look forward to what she will achieve in the future as the head teacher of Garrison School. Describe you as a boy of Mountie Gaia. Campus, Kev Nogal, Bendy Gedig. Artemis. Rowan, my escort for Goyer and Redvet, my Chadod Yadol, are my Arbini Yauni Nivel plant are at Rowan. We are now going to interview Marshall Crow and then Guy. Did you teach at Galton School and did you enjoy your time teaching at Galton School? Yeah, my main subject for GCIC and A levels was physics, um, and then for Key Stage 3 it was science. Um, not all the sciences at Key Stage 3, which is slightly different um, from what the Gulag curriculum is. It's a curriculum for Wales is introducing. Did I enjoy it? Yes, very, very much. I really enjoyed teaching. I um, enjoyed working with the other staff, I enjoyed working with the pupils, being part of their lives, and, and just being in the canteen, because I used to do canteen duty. Just being in the canteen and sharing with the, the young men, young women, the boys and girls were their part of that. Um, I actually went into teaching almost by accident. I never thought of becoming a teacher. Um, but then I went into sort of teaching, and it's for me it was the best thing I ever did. Enjoyed every minute of it. So, and you know, I retired because of that, getting a bit older and it wasn't as fresh and as bouncy as I used to be, and I just thought it's time to go. But I didn't leave. Because I'd had enough, I really had left because I think, yeah, age was catching up and I wasn't able to sort of learn at the same time. But I really enjoyed every minute of teaching. Thank you. Lynn, how do the current school grounds compare to when you were in school? Very, very different because we're talking about 56 years ago when I started. And so basically, it was only a block. So the block that we are now in. There wasn't a B block, there wasn't a science block, there wasn't a sports hall. In fact, I think part of your canteen was actually our gym, the, the furthest end of that. We used to play hockey on the front lawn, or hockey on the bottom lawn, and tennis in the tennis courts. But then behind the tennis courts, or rather to the side, were railings with a narrow path that led out into Park Road. So there was no parking. Um, the other side of the sports hall or anything like that. Nowhere where you could do drama. It was all done in our main school hall. So very, very different from years ago. And, but remember, we were only girls here. And the boys' school was where a school every four years. And so you weren't allowed any, you weren't allowed out to see that today in the lunch hour. And no contact with the boys at all. And so if the boys actually came up on special occasions, which was usually a sixth form for a certain folk club or music club. It was very exciting. So it was very, very different and much smaller. Marvin, how has the last language evolved at Galton School since your English year? I think it's changed a great deal. Um, when I was here, thinking of GCSEs, for example, not very many people would have done the GCSEs. There's only about, I guess, about 10 or 15, so it's very, very small. Um, whereas now, you've got virtually everybody doing a GCSE in Welsh. Um, so in, in that basic way, it was changed. When I was here, we were just beginning to be 
required to get you to answer I'm a, 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 to the register, but it's known as a lot more um, Welsh, incidental Welsh being used in the classrooms. Um, I think the, the, the basic confrontation with Welsh was in assemblies when we sang the of the of the essay. I think that was always a little bit of my words because you can hear that I'm not uh, originally from Wales myself. Um, so that is it's obviously changed too. There's been much more Welsh brought in. Uh, there was literally no bilingual signage when I was here. Um, when it's now you look around the school and you're, you're seeing bilingual language um, signage coming up as well. I think what I personally believe is there's a lot more Welsh culture and Welsh awareness now. Almost a lot, a lot more Welsh pride. Um, I came from teaching in England to teach in Swansea to here at Gallatin. And when I was talking at the beginning with people who were doing GCSE Welsh or anything like that, I would ask them, the pupils, um, about the Welsh language, and they were quite negative about it. Um, you know, they didn't want to do it, or they felt it was a total waste doing it. And that surprised me, because coming from Scotland, we were very proud about it to teach. I thought young people in Wales and older people would be proud to be Welsh, we'd be proud of their heritage, we'd want to pick up the language and want to run with that. Whereas what I'm seeing now is a much more pride in being Welsh, much more awareness of Welsh culture and Welsh language. Um, and to me, it's, it's much more what I was expecting when I first came here, that, that, that young people are proud, yeah, really proud to be Welsh, and really proud of their, their heritage and, and the roots around them. And I think to me that's a significant change, not just the numbers during GCSE, but the way that Welsh has become much more important in day-to-day -day life. That is very, very different from where I'm seeing. Positively, creatively, one thing is marvellous. Okay. Uh, Lynn, if you could use three words to describe your time at Garrison Girls Grammar School, what would they be? Well, the first one would be discipline. We would, it was very school that ensured there was a lot of discipline, even about telling you about the indoor and outdoor shoes and also the uniform. We had a uniform inspection every term where they actually measured with a ruler how high your skirts were from the floor. I mean, when you think that's probably quite archaic. Um, also, you weren't allowed to go up the main staircase, you weren't allowed to cross the hall. Um, it's very, very rigid, but you know, discipline is a good thing in some ways, as long as it isn't so intense. Because if you have discipline in school, you get discipline in your own life. And you look at yourselves and you think, you know, how can I discipline myself to do this and that? So I would say that's one word. It's, it's not something to be afraid of, but it's something that I think, you know, looking back, I, I was grateful for the discipline in this school. The other one is tradition. Because if you look at how many Gavitonians, people who have come here, staff who have come here, there's a wide range of, of famous Gavitonians in sport, music, politics, I think for lots and lots. And if you do get a chance, and you can go to the look at the Gavitonian Society, because then you see all about these famous people and all the events and everything. So I would say tradition, and in fairness, the traditions continue to this day. I think, you know, should be very proud to be in this school and be part of the school. And finally, friends and friendships, because the friends you make here could be friends that will be with you for life. And I'm very grateful. And here are the friends that were in the first photo, and that, that was taken three years ago, and we actually had a lunch in April, so we still keep in touch. Some of these live all over the country, and I've got a little messenger group. Some live in Canada, some live in Barbados, not these ladies, but um, you know, it, it's wonderful. So, treasure your friendships, and I would say those are the three words that really I think of when I think of this school. Dear Camario, we hope that you've enjoyed learning about the history of Gowden School and the past head teachers.